The brain wars have begun, a robotic arms race that will redefine what it means to be human and what it means to be a monkey. If you're jealous that monkeys are playing telepathic video games before you, don't worry, humans are catching up. This video is about the latest in both human and monkey brain implants. This is Elliot Eim with I'm Curious. Two big things happened in just the month since my last video. We looked at the basics of how brain implants work, and we saw that Neuralink could read brain activity wirelessly, but they'd only shown it in pigs. Back in 2019, Elon Musk said they got a monkey to control a computer with its brain. Neuralink's president, Max Hodak, wasn't too happy about this surprise announcement. You know, a monkey has been able to control the computer with its brain. Just, you yeah. yeah. <laughs> FYI. I, I didn't realize so, we were running that result today, but there well, it goes. <laughs> the monkey's going to come out of the bag, so. <laughs> but Neuralink finally brought the receipts. This is Pager, a monkey with two Neuralinks in his motor cortex. They had him play with a joystick, and they calibrated the Neuralinks by reading the electrical signals that his brain was sending to his arm. After only a few minutes of this, they could tell where Pager was moving the joystick just from reading his brain activity. Then, they unplugged the joystick, so Pedro thought he was playing with it, like when you give your little brother a controller and he thinks he's playing Madden with you, except his brain signals were directly controlling the game, making the joystick and Pedro's arm obsolete. Next, they took the joystick away entirely, and Pedro played Pong with his mind. A vision of things to come, getting a squirt of banana smoothie whenever you hit the Pong ball, with no need for these meatbag limbs anymore. Other researchers have gotten monkeys to use robot arms and drive a mobility scooter with their brain. The future's gonna rule, dude. And for legal reasons, we have to test the future on monkeys first. But we already saw that BrainGate lets humans control computers and robotic arms if they're wired up to it. So who's gonna be the first to let humans do this wirelessly? Well, BrainGate just beat Neuralink to the punch. BrainGate's big limitation was that you needed to be plugged in like a human toaster, but they just added Bluetooth, basically, and two tetraplegic patients have been able to wirelessly control a tablet. One of them used Pandora and turned on March Madness, and the other was typing and checking his email and the weather. Both of them played this grid game just as well as they did with the wired up BrainGate, which is a good sign. But BrainGate still has a long way to go. They're still using these big antennas, and the signal gets screwed up when people just walk past. So they needed to, quote, reposition the wheelchair for better reception. Hopefully they work out the kinks so when your roommate walks past you, it doesn't accidentally start your Tesla and run it into a tree. Neuralink can already pair with an iPhone app, but we all know how frustrating it is when you can't get your frickin' headphones to sync, or your keyboard or your mouse, or your f***ing phone won't send the YouTube to the smart TV, hypothetically. So imagine how frustrating it'll be when your robot arm won't connect to your brain. You know it's going to happen, but at least you won't be able to throw anything. As you saw, typing on BrainGate is still pretty slow. In 15 minutes, they typed about 200 characters, around 13 characters per minute. But they're finding ways to type much faster than clicking on a keyboard. Another study they haven't officially published yet got up to 90 characters per minute with almost perfect accuracy by having people trace out letters like their handwriting. So the battle for the brain is heating up on multiple fronts. Here's the score so far on some key metrics. BrainGate has had a big head start and they're already in humans. But Neuralink has 10 times as many electrodes and they're just getting started. Neuralink is really focused on the engineering side and they want to beef up the specs before they think too much about what it'll actually do inside the brain. Elon always emphasizes that you do not need experience working with the brain in order to work at Neuralink. But both companies want scientists to do research using their devices. BrainGate already has an impressive list of publications, and we've barely scratched the cortical surface of how these can be used as research tools, both for medical research and for understanding the brain more generally. We barely know anything about how the brain works. With fMRI, we can tell that certain big areas are involved with certain tasks, like the motor cortex and moving your arm. And with single neuron recordings, we can see specific nerve cells sending signals to each other. But we know very little about how groups of neurons encode complex patterns of information. 
But if we have tools that can read and stimulate on thousands of channels at a time, we can start filling in this major knowledge gap and combining it with other research tools like psychedelic drugs. That will happen, you heard it here first. Neuralink has made it clear that it wants to be a consumer product. BrainGate seems more focused on medical use and scientific research. But if they can get these surgeries approved for the general public, there's going to be a whole industry around brain implants. It'll be legal somewhere, even if you have to go to Thailand to get one for a while. And then there's the hype war. If Elon keeps his track record of public demonstrations, it's going to be fun to watch. A lot of the brain implant stuff is overhyped, and it's easier said than done. Don't get me started on Elon's plan to do telepathy with pure concepts. But crazy stuff is coming. It's only a question of when. If you already think your mind is being warped by your constant attachment to your phone and social media and advertising, that'll only get more intense if you get more plugged in. But as you sink into it, you might start to notice it less and less until the digital world becomes your real world. Creepy? Yes. But kind of awesome, maybe? At least for the people who can afford it. This stuff is moving along pretty fast, so if you want to keep up, activate that motor cortex and click subscribe. See ya, nerds.